This example using Lagrange multipliers is about the shortest distance. The question says, find the points. Find the points on the sphere. Okay. On the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to four that are closest to and farthest from the point closest to and farthest from the point okay what is the point then the point three one negative one uh-huh okay so i'm trying to maximize and minimize a function this is my goal but what is that function our goal is to maximize minimize distance function okay distance function we have a formula for distance function the distance between two points first of all note that here you have a sphere okay this is your sphere in three dimension and you're trying to find the closest and farthest from a given point which is three one negative one three one and negative one it means that you're looking for those points on the sphere x y and z x y and z that has the maximum or minimum distance so the distance formula says hey you have x y z you have the second point just use the formula the distance formula is the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z minus minus 1 or plus 1 squared. Okay, very good. This is our goal. We try to maximize, minimize this function. But note that when it comes to radical function, we don't have to optimize the whole radical we only need to focus on the quantity inside the radical so i'm going to define f of x y and z equals to the quantity inside x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z plus 1 to the second power very good what else is given? The constraint is given. This sphere is not shrinking and it's not expanding. This is a fixed square. So the constraint is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 4. So let us apply Lagrange multipliers method. The gradient of f must be set to lambda gradient of g well well the gradient of f is 2 times x minus 3 comma 2 times y minus 1 comma 2 times z plus 1 it must be equals to lambda 2x 2y and 2z perfect so let us begin you have two vectors equal to each other it means that their components must be equal to each other. Two times x minus three is lambda two x. Two times y minus one, just doing algebra. Let me emphasize on that. Two times y minus one equals to lambda two y. Two times z plus one equals to lambda two z. And we have a nice constraint here. Well, what we can do here? For example, we can isolate x and isolate y and isolate z and 
and then plug them all back into the constraint. So take a look at this. What do I have here? I have 2x minus 6 equals to lambda 2x. I have 2y minus 2 equals to lambda 2y. And I have 2z plus 2 equals to lambda 2z. Well, well, this guy can be written as let me factor out x here. I can factor out 2x. It doesn't matter. Lambda 2x minus 2x equals to negative 6. Lambda 2y minus 2y negative 2. Lambda 2z uh, minus 2z equals to 2. So this set can be written as x times or I can just fact out 2, it doesn't matter. You can do the algebra later, that's fine. x2 lambda minus 2 equals to minus 6, y times 2 lambda minus 2 equals to negative 2, and z times 2 lambda minus 2 equals to 2, all right? So this equation, this set of equations can be written this way. My x can be written as negative 6 divided by 2 times lambda minus 1. My y can be written as negative 2 divided by 2 times lambda minus 1. And my z can be written as 2 over 2 times lambda minus 1. So what's the use of it? Hey, I wrote down each of these variables in terms of one variable. It means that now I can use my constraint and plug those in and solve for lambda. I know x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 4. So negative 6, which is now, let me just write down everything here for you. Negative 6 divided by 2 times lambda minus 1 to the second plus negative 2 divided by 2 times lambda minus 1 to the second plus z squared, which is 2 over 2 times lambda minus 1 to the second is equal to four. You have one equation in one variable that you can solve. Very good. So four is equal to, here either of these can be written in positive because you're eventually raising these into the second power. So you get nine over lambda minus one to the second, Plus, you can cancel these two out, 1 over lambda minus 1 to the second. And here you have, you can cancel these two out. We get, let's see, 1 over lambda minus 1 to the second equals to 4. Very good. So what do we have here? We have 11 over lambda minus 1 to the second equals to 4, or lambda minus 1 to the second is equal to 11 over 4 or just pure algebra, the rest is just pure algebra. Lambda minus one is plus minus square root of 11 divided by two, or lambda can be written as one plus minus square root of 11 over two. Guys, you have your lambda now. You have two possible values. What are you going to do? You're going to calculate x, y, and z now. Okay, you're going to plug in lambdas here, lambdas here, lambdas here, right? Very good. So you're going to get a lot of values, right? Lambda equals to 1 plus square root of 11 divided by 2, plug in here. Lambda equals to 1 minus square root of 11 divided by 2, land it here. Lambda equals to 1 plus square root of 11 divided by 2 for y. And lambda equals to 1 minus square root of 11 divided by 2 for y again. And then lambda equals to 1 plus square root of 11 divided by 2 for z. And lambda equals to 1 minus square root of 11 divided by 2 for z here. Guys, again, just keep your eyes on maximizing and minimizing the function, right? After finding x, y, and z, your job is to plug those into this 
relation between x, y, and z and find the values for your f, the maximum value of f. Then you need to enter that into the square root to find the maximum distance. The minimum value of f goes inside the radical to get your minimum distance, all right? There is this pure algebra, all right? You can continue to plug in these values into the function after finding x, y, and z, plug those into the function and evaluate your d. Finally, you need to get the following values. So the closest point to the sphere is going to be 6 over square root of 11, 2 over square root of 11, and negative 2 over square root of 11. And the farthest, after doing the algebra, you're going to see that it is negative 6 over square root of 11. And then we have negative 2 over square root of 11. And then we have 2 over square root of 11. It's a good practice to do a little bit of algebra, plug in these values, the lambda values, find your points, and then enter them into f. Whereas just note that after doing the algebra here, all of them are raised to the second power. So if you get the same number with plus minus, you don't have to plug in both of them. Just one is enough. 